let's do a mermaid. Well, we're not going to do the whole mermaid, we're going to do the tail. And it's going to look something like this. It's the first one I did, but when I recorded it, uh, the lighting was too dark. So I'm doing another one to get a better recording. So we're going to start off with a basic glass. We just need light blue, turquoise, iridescent, clear enamel, a, it's a double zero round point, and a few dot tools. We're going to use a little bit of this turquoise Vitria 160 relief, and then there's a PBO set that we are going to use the gold out of. And so that you can do this on your own, here's a um, template that I drew out and I will post a link where you can go get this for free and then just cut out the image that you want to paint. And I'll do a video for each of those images, just have to do them one at a time. When you cut it out, what you want to do is take a little piece of tape and put it behind the glass. My hope is that with these videos, anybody who is not talented with uh, art but likes to do it anyway, has what they need to be able to make something really pretty. So, kind of fold it where you want the top of the uh, image to go. Place it inside the glass. Don't go too high up to the edge because people have to drink out of this glass. And then just kind of press it a little bit. That's the image. When you buy these, they uh, have a little bit of silver lining. Um, you just unscrew this in order to get that, take it off. And once you've taken that off or punched a hole in it, it's already got a hole up here. So you should have no problem getting it to come out. If it clogs up or gets thick, you can clean it out with a uh, straight pin from your sewing kit. To trace the image, hold it in one position that's very comfortable to you. Don't move it all around. Um, try to start in the center. And then once you start, look out of one eye. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but you will find that if you look out of one eye, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to be able to get pretty close. And it doesn't have to be exact. I mean, this is a guide. It's not supposed to be the exact image you create, but it's a guide to give you something that looks like a mermaid's tail. And we will go back with the gold. When we're done, it's a lot on the edge, just clean that off. Make sure you're in position. The reason I'm starting out with the blue instead of the gold, even though I'm going to go over it at the end with the gold. So I want to get... When I put the blue colors in here, I want to get this blue. To, it'll just meld with it. It won't look like it's an addition to it, but it'll keep the paint from smearing or um, because it's liquidy. As we fill this in, you'll see you want something on the border to confine it. And the reason I go back with the gold is to get a nice pop of color. A 
line everything back up when you go to do uh, what I guess you call it a ribbon um, I would line it up and then I would try to be looking at the very center maybe where the M is on the image which will unline some of the other things and that's okay um, what we're trying to do here is decide exactly where this line is Chasing stars, seeking lights. I'm not going to do the dots um, until this dries. So I'm going to let this dry at this point. And I won't paint them amazing or the dots until this is dry. I filled in all uh, my colors and then I'll come back with the gold because I'll still be able to see through the glass to some extent. It'll probably take about 20 minutes. Okay, we're now going to do uh, the gold on the bubbles. This is dry enough that I don't have to worry about bumping into anything. Um, but we're not going to do anything else in gold. So I start out where I, my image is lined up. I tilt it just a little bit to the right, but not too much. And then I start making my circles. And they should get a little bit smaller as they go up the glass. They should zigzag left to right, left to right, left to right, left. Line it up, tilt it just a little bit, and start making bubbles. We'll fill them in with a little bit of color. Give them about 20 minutes to dry. For the most part, we're going to be dropping the color in, and, and we're going to just put a little bit of this iridescence underneath in a few places. Um, what you want to do is think about well, where do you want your shadows. In my case, I'm going to put them on the left side and I'll use the iridescence more towards the right side. And I'll use a little bit in the middle just to give it some variation. I'll use some of the iridescence uh, where the words are going to go. And that just helps them pop a little bit more against the, uh, the colors. So. And you can see the turquoise is a lot darker than the light blue. The iridescence is basically a pearl. To do this, we're going to be using the brush and different size dot tools to help spread the paint around. So I think what we'll do is start at the top of the glass and work our way around from there. So, so a big enough area that I can get a larger amount of the paint to start with. I'm just going to push it around inside the channel. It's going to want to self-level. You want to keep working. You don't want to have it basically start and then dry in a spot. You want to try and keep working. Adding some of the lighter blue. Let the two mix naturally. And come all the way to the edge and I am going to grab another one of these tools with a much smaller point. I'm going to take a little bit of this pearlescence and I'm going to drop it and mix it in with the blue. Just at the very tip of this. I'll wipe the excess off. I don't want it 
drying on the tool itself too quickly. I'm going to reverse now with some of the lighter blue. together. And I'm tapping to drop more paint onto the glass. Okay. This is all lighter blue. of it on here and smear it around. I am working in sections. Um, once I muddy up the uh, tool too much, just go back and clean it and come back. got those lines and they're going to help me make a few design changes. So I'm going to go back and get more of my pearlescence and I'm going to mix it in between two of the lines. Clean it real quick, grab some more. Go next to another one. Clean it, grab some more, and go next to another one. That's probably plenty. How much you put and what it ends up looking like is kind of up to you. But I think we managed to get a decent amount of variation on this. So using my really tiny tool, the next thing I'm going to do is grab the uh, dark and just fill this in. I'm gonna leave it dark. I'll come back with the gold and edge it. It's such a small piece. I don't have enough room to do a lot of variation in color. So we'll let that dry dark and we'll make it uh, fancy and noticeable later. Now I'm tilting this a little bit to see where I might be missing some paint because that sometimes happens based on the angle that you're at. So I'm just going to go in and fill it out in a couple of spots by adding a little bit more paint to the edge. I don't see any other holes, so I think I'm good. Wait, there's one right there. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. thing I'm going to work on is in the center here. I'm going to go uh, the darker blue here, the lighter blue there, and in the middle is where I'll use the uh, pearlescence to give it a little bit of a three-dimensional effect. All of these are pretty small spaces, so I'm going to stick with the real small guy on my dot tools.
right now what you can see is that by using the, the blue, I'm able to get all my little definitions. I'll be able to see the lines when I go back over them with the gold. If I had done the gold first, it actually would have been harder to make sure everything got filled up. Plus, I don't have to necessarily stay in the lines. I can keep smearing the paint well over them. So I'm able to paint uh, faster doing it this way. Still trying to keep the leading edges wet. We're going to do the dots, uh, lighter to darker. I'm not going to use the iridescence um, probably because they're small. I'm going to do a tiny bit here, here, and here. Same thing, darker on the bottom. thing we're going to paint um, and the blue is down here and to do that we're going to use the brush for part of it and then we'll use the dot tool to push it into the edges wherever it looks like it might need it so the first thing I want to do is put uh, a layer of the pearlescence on here a nice thick layer this is um, Then I'm going to take uh, the next color blue and go right over that. I'm now literally mixing, and you can do this um, on a palette, but I've had enough practice where I really don't need to. I'm going to leave um, this area above there, I think light blue, and the reason I'm doing that is it gives me a chance to put darker blue along his edge. So I'm going to fill that with a light blue, I'm going to leave it straight, so I'm going to drop a drop, get rid of the excess, and just put it in place. Then I'm going 
going to take some of the darker color and put it here. And I've got a dark edge there, so I'll put it also down here. Right? And I'm going to take a lighter blue and I'm going to pull put it to the edge and then I'll pull the other thing up with it. And I'm going to take a little bit of This side it's kind of the same um, thing the question is you're going light to dark light to dark so I'm guessing that I'll put some dark in this spot which means I need to put some light in this one I'm just get, getting rid of my excess paint <clears throat> Here, drop here. I'll probably stop with the dark. I'm gonna come back with some of the blue. Now I need to let this dry for, um, I think at least 30 minutes, and I need to let it dry um, at an angle, so put some stuff next to it, that way it doesn't roll. I can go ahead and do the gold, start uh, in the center and work my way outward. You can decide if you want to do a couple of extra dots anywhere like in the middle or something like that.
Now that we're done with the base painting, we're going to just take this off and check it to see if there's any spots that are too thin on the paint or that we want to add some more paint to. And it'll be easier to see if I put this behind it and flatten it on up to the glass. The other thing I'll do is hold it up to the light and try to see if I've got any spots. Well, I'm seeing a lot of light through them. Don't seem to have any, so that's good. So let's give this a quick clear coat. This is a clear medium 4035 folk art paint. And we're going to just put some of this on top of the paint that's here. Don't give it an extra layer of protection. I do sell these on Etsy. I want to make sure that my customers uh, don't have any problems with their glasses. the way this uh, gold makes these look like little jewels have been attached to the glass. Which is so pretty. We'll let this dry overnight and then I'll do a quick check to see if there's anything I need to clean up. There usually is. Do that by holding it up to the light and very carefully checking the glass for uh, maybe I touched the paint and I smeared it a little bit. If there's any residue from the piece of tape, I'll get that off. A little bit of rubbing alcohol does wonders. And then I will fire this 350 for 40 minutes. That way everything gets fired and completely cured. I hope you liked the video. If you do, uh, do me a favor. Like, comment, subscribe. If you do make this glass, uh, I am going to give you a link for the image. Uh, no cost or anything for that. And if you do make and paint the glass, please um, you know, share, share a picture. I'd love to see it.